In this video, I'll be talking about this fun little toy. This is called the Tom's Fidgets, the Flippy Chain, although people tend to call them different things. This is a uh, handcrafted in the USA Flippy Chain stress reducer fidget toy, uh, office toy. They, they go by all sorts of different descriptors, but basically this is it. And it's a fun little fidget toy, something just to kind of occupy your hands, probably while you're doing something else. You could use it one-handed. You could use it with two hands. Uh, I forget the age range, but it's usually uh, I think it's, you know, seven plus or something like that. And it'll say that on the sales page, which I'll link to below. It's a very popular item online. Uh, it's kind of addictive, which is, I guess, the point with these things. Uh, it takes a little bit of dexterity, more so than a lot of the other uh, toys. And that's just because it's rather small you know, and doing it with a camera in front of you is obviously uh, a lot more challenging than it would be otherwise. But just to get into the basics, this thing costs about uh, maybe $700 online, but it's something you can make yourself if you have access access to a bicycle chain. These are two links from a bicycle chain with the two uh, attaching pieces disconnected and obviously cleaned very well. It's not like it's covered in uh, bicycle grease or anything like that. Then two uh, key ring chains or key rings rather. And then little silicon, uh, kind of like they're not dental rubber bands, but that sort of thing, two little silicon O-rings here. And that's just for grip. Those don't serve any real purpose. And basically what you have is the two rings are put through one another. So they're connected. And then the two different uh, bike chains they don't have their central pin in them. The pin was removed and it's been replaced with the key ring. And when those key rings are put together with the chain between them, basically what it allows you to do is this action here is flip the apparatus through itself. You see this chain, I'm uh, sorry, this key ring is uh, on, is under the other one at the top and on top of it, below it, right? So just watch that there. And then you flip. It basically, I guess you can call it through one another. And that is the motion. You know, you're not doing it, staring at it up close, but it just lets you see what the motion is. And, you know, with some practice, you could do this one-handed. Again, it's hard with a camera in front of you, but you do this one-handed, you could kind of bring it to this X shape and get some tension. You could move the uh, these a little bit up and down, but not really, right? The, uh, the shape of these circles means that as you push this down, the two circles are getting closer together. So this doesn't really want to go. You have the O-rings to keeping these components together and also giving you some grip. It's pretty silent. I would not say it's silent, but it's quite quiet. And you, can, you, could, you could shake it, uh, but it really cannot generate a lot of volume. So the size, uh, it's a little bit hard to make out the size, but basically this is a standard keychain ring, which is about the size of a quarter, like a US quarter. So this is smaller than two quarters put together because there is this overlap. It's like a Venn diagram with, uh, you know, maybe 20% uh, or, you know, 33% of each quarter overlapping. So this thing is quite small. So if you have adult hands, uh, it can be hard to play with this thing because it's just on the tiny side. And if you keep it kind of in your hand like this, then you can kind of uh, cup it and it becomes easier to use. But uh, on the whole, I would say it's 
on the small side. And I can feel my hands just sort of feeling like cramping up. Not not cramping up, just like getting tight. And that's, you know, later in the day, you uh, you get that feeling. But if you kind of do it like this and you get this cupping action going where you don't really have to worry about dropping it, then uh, you can start building up some momentum. And, you know, without paying attention to it, get some nice spinning going. You could change the spin direction. Uh, you could try to spin it sideways. Uh, you could, you know, grab it into a sort of tension point and play with it. But that's about it. It's actually a really simple toy. I would say the real crux of it and the real attractive thing and why I'm guessing so many people buy these online is this simple action right here of it spinning in on itself is it just seems like it shouldn't be possible, right? How could two circles spin into one another, but it's sort of twisting through each other in a very cool way. And the first time you play with this thing, it's just like, uh, it's surprising how something so simple using very easy to find household components could be, uh, you know, could work like this and be so much fun. You know, we'll say it loses its its fun factor over the time. And eventually the small size kind of wears me down and it doesn't become a, a toy that I find to be uh, super fun as an adult. But it's definitely a uh, top seller with uh, for people that look for a sort of a fidget toy for children. Uh, like grade school though, right? Because you don't want it to be too small because this thing is, uh, I would say it's definitely a choking hazard. And it is, uh, you know, maybe seven plus, eight plus into that range where people aren't going to put this, uh, you know, metal stuff in their mouth or kind of chew on this or something like that. Uh, so it is small, but uh, it's, uh, you know, good for people with small hands as well. So you have to use your judgment there and figure out the right age range. So that is the Tom's Fidget. The, uh, I'll get the official name. It's the Flippy Chain, made in the U.S., stress reducer, fidget toy, whatever. There you go.